I released a swarm of AI agents into a virtual machine and had them build digital cities of AI slop. These are 10 AI agents working in parallel to create both complex images and a fully interactive website that you can go play with right now. It is all slop, but some of it is actually pretty impressive and fun to play with. This is a country of geniuses in a data center, or a group of morons in a virtual machine. This week, Anthropic quietly released several experimental updates to Claude Code, their command line coding clinker. Unfortunately, the news was drowned out by Sam Altman's new AI TikTok slop app. Yes, 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 that's me. Every day we stray further from God. The Claude Code update includes a new model, Claude 4.5 Sonnet, but also something called sub-agents. By itself, a single agent can write and execute code, which lets it do things like generate images by drawing shapes and patterns with Python. It can then view those image files and modify its code to modify the image. This is OpenAI's Codex agent, which can finally view images and engage in this infinite task of viewing and modifying its output. But with sub-agents, Claude can spin up several versions of itself to run in parallel and complete a series of subtasks. Each task thing here indicates a sub-agent at work. The main agent is a sort of leader or orchestrator, and it prompts all of the sub-agents with instructions for their sub-task. When done, each agent reports back to the leader with a summary of its work. I know other multi-agent frameworks exist, but this is the first one to be released by a frontier AI company. I'm not gonna lie, these animals look pretty good despite their imperfections. I'm impressed with the new model, so let's throw a swarm of these agents at some of the previous programming challenges that I've done on this channel. I am uniquely qualified to judge their outputs because I am famously the second best programmer ever. The first best is of course this guy. So I am the smartest programmer that has ever lived. <laughs> And the third best programmer is obviously Claude 3.5 Sonnet, my beloved. But let's give Claude 4.5 Sonnet a chance and see if it can live up to its ancestors. We will repeat the same experiment that I ran last time, which is to generate a city in a big shared image file. We will spin up 10 sub-agents and let their leader decide on how to organize and prompt them. They are encouraged to repetitively view the image and refine their work. It's off to a rough start, they overwrote the initial image like five times. They are given a shared text file for communication, which they can all read and append messages to. Admittedly, this is a very crude way to enable communication, but they can't communicate natively. The leader agent doesn't talk during the task, and it can only respond when all of the sub-agents are done. And the sub-agents cannot communicate with each other unless through a shared resource in their environment, like a text file. There are definitely better ways to do multi-agent communication. You could use a database or even give them some sort of built-in group chat that is always in context. But it might actually be a good thing that they can't communicate. In my last video, they seem to cause each other to spiral off into delusional hallucinations, and that just makes the slot problem that much worse. Anthropic actually has a really interesting blog post on their problems with multi-agent coordination. It's worth a read. You've probably noticed that the terminal gets really glitchy and flashy and auto-scrolls a lot. Sorry about that. Please fix this, Anthropic. It hurts my eyeballs. Also, annoyingly, sub-agents keep asking for permission for the same things. They should make it so that if you approve it for one, you approve it for all. So it's coming along, I guess. There's some structure here, but it's pretty messy. A few people commented last time that this looks like r slash place, the Reddit experiment where they let anyone draw one pixel at a time. And yeah, this experiment was directly inspired by r slash place, and I think the differences are very telling. Place was definitely messy and sloppy, but it had some real order and structure that consistently emerged and battled against the slop. This AI slop city, on the other hand, doesn't really have that same kind of order, even though it's an easier task on a smaller scale with centralized planning. Slop is the default AI behavior, the rule, not the exception. The slop problem is THE problem, working against the usability of AI systems, and it's just a huge problem with generative AI as a whole. 
output can just be bad, obviously or subtly. AI lacks attention to detail, it lacks polish, it is unreliable and inconsistent, and is a mess of styles and structures. It's sloppy, and this slop can be mass-produced and published out onto the internet by lazy, careless, or deceptive humans. This has become a major pollution problem, where AI slop pollutes the very datasets that train these language models, and, you know, also the rest of the internet that we all use. And yes, I have published some of this slop out onto the internet too, but in a contained way with a clear label that it is AI content. It doesn't hurt anyone, except for AI companies that scrape my stuff. The flaws here are obvious. The flaws will not be obvious in code that is not visual or intuitive. Big swarms of AI agents amplify the problem, and they can build labyrinths of bad code. I, again, do not recommend letting AI go wild in real code bases that people depend on. Every line of AI code should be read and tested by a human. Or even just written by a human. Imagine that. Don't be lazy. Resist the slop. Make good code. Now, I told Claude to its face that this is slop, and of course it apologized. Language models are machines that apologize. I gave it another chance with fewer agents and more specific instructions to avoid slop. It took longer, and in the end I guess it did do a little better. It insisted that it was not slop. And I mean, this is less sloppy, but just by virtue of being more boring. It's still not great. It does not seem to be able to recognize slop on its own. Maybe this is mostly the fault of its image processing, that it's just not trained on these kinds of weird images and so it can't reliably critique them, but I think there are many weaknesses on display here. However, the next experiment turned out much better and kind of blew me away. I had them make a website that I call Slop City. It is a static website, meaning there's no backend, no server, no database. It's just a bunch of web pages that are hyperlinked together. I was much more involved in setting up the infrastructure for this one. I made a proper Git repository, which is open source, it's linked below. We are not doing any multi-agent communication this time, that didn't seem to help. And to give the agents the ability to see the web pages they're making, I had Claude make a little script that uses Playwright to render the web page, to take a screenshot and then print any console output or errors. So by taking a few extra steps, the agents can look at the web pages that they make and get feedback, although they can't interact with those pages. And then I had Claude spin up 10 sub-agents, tasking each one to make a set of creative, unique web pages in its own little folder. Each agent is responsible for creating, reviewing, and linking together all of its pages. It is possible that they could create dead web pages that are not linked to from any other page. Finally, each agent is responsible for linking to its pages from a central hub page, index.html, which connects all the little websites of all the little sub-agents. The central hub is the only shared resource that they all must edit, but otherwise they are decently siloed off into their own little projects, which really helps keep things organized. For this to work, I had to be much more involved. I thought a lot about how I wanted to approach it, and I had to give a very clear prompt. The prompt is also in the readme, by the way. This turned out to be a very doable, reasonable task, and they performed well. This is more or less exactly what these agents are trained to do. They've been trained on tons of code and images from websites. The leader agent chose some good subjects, organized the sub-agents well, and all of them ended up doing a pretty good job. They regularly used the web renderer tool to get feedback, and they made some pretty cool stuff. I don't think there are any dead, unlinked pages in the final product, but if you find one, let me know. I think this mostly worked because the structure of this project lends itself very well to multi-agent collaboration. Each agent's project is self-contained and self-sufficient. They are not working on shared resources. That removes a lot of the problems that we were seeing earlier. There's much less risk of them overriding or destroying each other's work. Although that is still possible. But at this point, do you really need a swarm of agents running in parallel for this task? Couldn't you just use one agent and have them sequentially make each web page? Yeah, potentially. It would take much longer, and it would maybe be less consistent just by virtue of being a longer task, but it is possible. It doesn't seem like agent swarms are a huge game changer, that they can suddenly do things that single agents just can't do. And swarms have the potential to be much more destructive and sloppy. They can unleash an avalanche of slop if you don't carefully prompt them and contain them. 
So I will skip to the end result. Here is the final Slop City website, which cost me about 17 bucks total. It's a little web of creative projects that are somewhat generic, but also pretty fun to play with. You can go play with it right now, the link is in the description. There are lots of problems with these, the most glaring of which are performance issues. A lot of these simulations chug, and they turn into slideshows. Some are pretty cool, I really like these maze ones. This one pits two maze-solving algorithms against one another, that's fun. And this one is a 3D maze with a 2D map on the side, isn't that cool? It's not very playable, the controls are clunky and slow, but it's neat that it came up with this on its own. I also had a lot of fun making little songs. There are some obvious flaws and some more subtle flaws. For instance, this neural network simulator kind of works, but I don't think it has activation functions, so it can't learn complex decision boundaries. I will let the work speak for itself. Go mess around with it and see what works and see what doesn't. I found it impressive and honestly a little scary as someone who used to do web development as a day job. That being said, it is deeply flawed and it would take a lot of work to make this an actual professional website. I maintain that it is a terrible idea to let AI do everything without human oversight. Human coders are still very valuable. Apparently, we're about three months away from either the AI bubble bursting or the full-blown singularity, so that should be entertaining. I'll be sure to make a video when that happens. But thanks for watching. Join my Patreon if you want to support my work, or check out this link for Scrimba to learn how to code. This link gives you a 20% discount and it directly supports my channel. You should learn to code, if only because learning to code is learning to think. Goodbye.